All right, so you want to talk about a stack of new releases yeah. because uh, DC's Connect hashtag 53 for October 2024 just dropped. And wow, it's a lot. It really is. It's a process. Yeah. You know, you're clearly looking to stay ahead of the game on these new releases. So let's uh, let's dive right in. Yeah, what I'm seeing here, it's not just about, you know, the what's next. It's like building on everything that came before. Right. It's like watching the future of the DC universe unfold. Exactly. And And speaking of the DC universe, New Gods. Yeah. You know, well, this this isn't just a reboot. This feels like a complete, like, seismic shift. Huge. Ram V and Evan Kinkle. Oh, yeah. Those are the guys behind this one. Huge names. And knowing Ram V's work. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Things are going to get real interesting. We're talking, like, death of an old god right out of the gate. And not just any. This goes back to Jack Kirby's, like, fourth world saga. You like, these are the beings that embody the forces of the universe, you know? Yeah. Good, evil, all of that. I mean, huge. Ram V has this way of taking these massive mythic figures and, like, bringing them down to Earth and making them feel really personal. Right. If you've read his Justice League Dark, you'll know what I mean. The way he handles magic and mythology with, like, a human touch. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. So imagine that, but with new gods. Okay, so not only is there like a new god in, well, a dead one. Right. But there's also this like mysterious kid on Earth with powers that are appearing at the same time. Classic. Yeah, it's a classic. Like a classic superhero origin story, but like with a new god's twist. Exactly. Okay, and if things couldn't get more complicated, Mr. Miracle Scott Free. Trying to navigate fatherhood. Right. In the middle of all this. Talk about high stakes parenting. Oh, tell me about it. (laughs) Speaking of high stakes, let's shift gears a little bit to a different corner of the DCU. We're finally getting some answers about Lois Lane. Oh, yeah. And how she got her superpowers. Okay. Remember when she went all superwoman on us? How could I forget? That was a wild ride. Yeah. So this is where I think we really start to see that interconnected DC universe. You know, it all ties in. It all ties together. Yeah. This isn't some like side story with Lois Lane. This goes directly into what's happening in action comics. Right. Which means big things for the whole Superman family. Exactly. I think DC is really going all in on this whole shared universe thing where everything matters and Mm -hmm. has ripple effects. I like it. I'm here for it. I'm totally here for it. Especially when it means we get a powered up Lois Lane. For sure. Okay. Moving on from super powered families to. Uh, I guess, more superpowered families. Right. Metamorpho, the element man himself, is getting his own time in the spotlight, Mm -hmm. and this is happening just as he's about to be in the new Superman movie. Oh, wow. Coincidence. I don't think so. I think not. It's a smart move for sure. It is. Yeah. It reminds me of what Marvel did. You know how they started putting out all those tie-in comics right before the movies came out? It's like they're taking a page out of their playbook, building on the hype, and hopefully, you know, reeling in some new readers for Metamorpho. Exactly. And he's a cool character. Right, yeah. Like, visually, he's interesting. Oh, totally. And his powers are super unique. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of cool characters, how about, like, a double dose of Damian Wayne this month? Oh! Now, this is where things get really interesting. For me, at least. Oh, okay. Especially if you're a fan of, like, the more, you know, the darker side of Batman. Right. So we've got two very different stories here. Yeah, tell me more. On the one hand, we've got Batman versus Santa Claus, Silent Night Returns. Okay. Lucas Kettner and Michaela Bandini. Oh, wow. Are tackling that one. I like these guys. And I have a feeling it's going to be visually stunning. Oh, for, for sure. Okay, you had me at Batman versus Santa Claus. It's a classic. <laughs> I mean, right up there with like Batman versus Superman. It's just begging to be read like next to a fireplace. Oh, totally. But uh, Damian Wayne is Robin going up against a holiday icon. It's an interesting choice. That's either genius or completely bonkers. I kind of love it. Maybe both. Right. It's definitely got that like holiday horror vibe going on yeah for sure which i think is kind of a nice change of pace it is but then on the other side of the spectrum we've got little batman okay this one sounds much darker right with damien like fully taking on the mantle of the bat wow talk about pressure that's a lot to live up to no longer robin (laughs) he is a batman right it makes you wonder like what even happened to bruce wayne yeah where is he in all of this and how does damien even with all of his training how does he deal with that right the weight of gotham the weight of gotham city on his shoulders yeah this is definitely one i'll be picking up it's interesting it all goes back to that idea of legacy like these 
these mantles, these heroes being tested and passed down. For sure. It's what keeps things interesting. It does. It keeps the DC universe moving forward. Exactly. And speaking of keeping things lively, let's not forget about the lighter side of DC. Right, of course. DC's Batman smells Robin laid an egg. Okay. I mean, come on, you gotta love that vibe. It's a mouthful. Batman smells, I'm sold. I mean, you know you're in for a good time. So yeah, we're getting some like holiday themed levity in Gotham. A little bit of fun. Exactly, and this is a fun one. It's a whole holiday anthology. Oh, nice. And there's a Marv Wolfman, Dead Man story in there. Wow, Dead Man, I love that guy. Yeah, so you know, Dead Man, he's the ghostly superhero. He can possess bodies. Oh yeah. So yeah, he's back and I guess he's bringing the holiday cheer. Nice. In his own, you know, spooky way. Gotta love Dead Man. It's always good to remember that even in a world with like super villains and cosmic threats. Right. It's not all doom and gloom. That there's still room for laughs. Yeah. And hey, for new readers, right. these kind of anthologies are a great way to sample like different characters and storylines. Oh, for sure. A nice little taste of everything. But let's be real. Yeah. Longtime fans are going to love this one too. Oh, I have no doubt. Okay, let's move on to some of the bigger ongoing storylines. Okay, sounds good. Action Comics is going weekly now. Wow, weekly. Which is always a bold move. It is. And we have a Phantom Zone prison break on our hands. Oh, boy. So this is where Mark Wade and Rico Tamaki's run, I think, <laughs> really kicks it into high gear. They've been building up to this. Yeah, they have. <laughs> and just for anyone who needs a refresher, the Phantom Zone is basically Superman's worst nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's this ghostly dimension where he manages all of his worst enemies. Right. And now they're all breaking loose. At the same time... Talk about bad timing. Right. Superman can't catch a break? Like, he doesn't have enough to deal with already. Oh, man. But what's really interesting about this is it's not just about punching your way out of cosmic prison. Right. There's got to be more to it. This arc really digs into the whole Superman family dynamic. Oh, interesting. And uh, things get messy. Family drama. Yeah. I'm here for it. And with three different artists contributing to this weekly format. Oh, wow. Three artists. The art is going to be amazing. It's going to be a visual feast. Okay. If you're in the mood for something a little darker and a little more grounded, okay. Detective Comics is for you. Nice. Tom Taylor. Oh, yeah. And Mikkel Jannon. Love those guys. They are on fire. That's a dream team right there. I am here for anything with Tom Taylor's name on it. He's so good. He just gets Batman. He does. This time, though. It sounds like things are going to get personal for Bruce Wayne. Oh, okay. How so? We're talking a mysterious villain targeting Gotham's elite. Interesting. Like going after the heart of everything Bruce holds dear. Wow. What I love about Tom Taylor's writing yeah. is he takes these like larger than life characters. Right. And he finds like the human core. Yeah. He makes them relatable. Yeah. So it's Batman, but it's also Bruce Wayne. Right. Dealing with, like, loss and vengeance. Yeah, that fine line. The fine line he walks every night. Exactly. And then you get Mickle Janet on the art for that. Oh, come on. Talk about unfair. That's not even fair. Those two together are magic. Pure magic. Speaking of magic. Okay, let's do it. Wonder Woman's back. She is. And this time, she's facing an enemy who has weaponized, like, the one thing that she can't fight. What's that? Anonymity. Oh, wow. That's clever. We've got Tom King, Bruno Redondo, and Kari Randolph all on this one. Another dream team. Talk about a creative dream team. It's amazing how they pull these teams together. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. But they're weaving this story. Yeah. That really gets to the heart of what it means to be Wonder Woman. I love that. Imagine fighting an enemy that you can't even see. Right. An enemy that could be anyone. Ah, oh, that's terrifying. And everyone. It's a really cool concept, right? Oh, yeah. Like, what happens when you have this hero who stands for truth and justice going up against this enemy that operates completely in the shadows? It's like her worst nightmare. It's Wonder Woman at her most vulnerable. Wow. And I am here for it. Me too. Okay. But uh, if shadowy villains aren't your thing, how about we talk about some good old-fashioned martial arts action? Let's do it. Because Black Canary is heating up this month. Nice. Zion is about to face her toughest opponent yet. Who is it? Lady Shiva. Oh, wow. Get ready for some, like, bone-crunching action. This is going to be good. Black Canary versus Lady Shiva. It's a classic matchup. This is like a battle that's been years in the making. For sure. A clash of styles, philosophies. Yeah. And with each of them pushing the other to the limit. Oh, yeah. We're talking, like, some incredible art and some truly epic fight choreography. It's going to be a visual feast. Okay, so, yeah, Black Canary definitely going on the must-read pile. 
Absolutely. But uh, maybe you're like me. Okay. And you like to savor these big events. Right. You know, in like a nice hefty collection. I get it. Well, the absolute power trade paperbacks are coming out. Oh, nice. And let me tell you, this event was a game changer. It really was. For the entire DCU. For sure. We're talking three different formats here, covering all the twists and turns okay. of Amanda Waller's master plan. She really shook things up. Oh, she did. We're talking heroes pushed to the edge, alliances completely shattered. Right. And Amanda Waller just, you know. Calling all the shots. Cementing her control over everything. If you want to understand, like, the power dynamics yeah. at play in the DCU right now. Right. This is where it starts. you got to read absolute power. Okay, so we've got cosmic beings, street-level vigilantes. Right. And now, how about a little magic? I'm always down for some magic. Mystic U is back. I loved that. But this time, it's getting the young adult treatment. Oh, wow. That's cool. Which is perfect. For new readers. Yeah, for younger readers. Or, honestly, anyone who loves a good magic school story right. set in the DC universe. I'm in them. It's Zatanna's early days. Oh, wow. At a magical academy. So cool. You know, learning to hone her powers. It's a classic. Who doesn't love a good origin story? Everyone loves a good origin story. Exactly. And uh, and let's not forget about the classics. Right. Because the DC finest line. Oh, yeah. It's expanding. Nice. And this time they're diving into some iconic runs. Okay, tell me more. We're talking Batman and Robin mm -hmm. by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. That's a great run. Such a good run. This is the one that really explores that bond between Bruce and Damien. Yeah. And, uh, and then we're going way back okay. to the Silver Age with Doom Patrol. Wow, classic Doom Patrol. Those early Doom Patrol stories were wild. They were out there. Even for comic books. Yeah. It's this team of like misfit heroes led by a scientist in a wheelchair right. going up against these like bizarre villains and these surreal threats. It's a trip. It is a trip, but like in the best way possible. For sure. And then if you're looking for a story that like redefined a character, okay, you can't go wrong with Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters. Oh yeah, that's a classic. This is the story that took Green Arrow from like the lighthearted archer to like this more, you know, grounded, gritty vigilante. I'll change it everything. And it's a classic for a reason. It really is. Man, that's uh that's quite the lineup. That's a lot of comics. From like cosmic epics to street level showdowns, yeah. magic schools, classic tales. It's a lot. It really feels like DC's October releases have something for everyone. They really do. So uh any final thoughts? Yeah, any final thoughts before we uh before we let everyone get to their pull lists. I think the biggest takeaway here is that the DC universe is massive. Oh, yeah. It's like this giant tapestry with all these different threads. I like that. You've got legacy characters taking on new roles, new heroes, getting their time to shine, classic stories being revisited and reimagined. Yeah, sure. So as you're going through these new releases, think yeah. about the threads that really speak to you. Yeah. What corners of this universe are you most excited to see explored? Ooh, that is a fantastic note to end on. I love that. Find your own path. Find your own path through the DC universe. <laughs> and hey, if you ever need a guide, you know where to find us. <laughs> Until next time, happy reading, everyone.